This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Entry Secrets, I'm going to be discussing vomiting in cats, what causes it, and the top natural remedies you can use to stop your cat from vomiting at home. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. In today's video, we're going to be discussing cat vomiting, uh, the variety of reasons, the more common reasons why your cats would be, would be vomiting, along with, in my opinion, the more effective uh, natural remedies or just home remedies, period. Uh, I'm fortunate to, be, to have friendly neighbors. I'm actually currently my neighbors, Shelly and Steve's. They have a couple of cats. Mangus is a big orange friendly guy who's going to be featured in the video. He's going to be our demonstrating cat today. I'll show you him down here. So here is Mingus here. He'll sort of be in and out of the video. He doesn't know me. He's a super friendly, big orange kitty. Um, he's about a year and a half. He's very playful and he really likes catnip. I think I'll film him rolling in the catnip after. So if you have sort of the basic principle, if you've got a cat that's acute, suddenly vomiting, acutely vomiting, or you know his gist has been vomiting off and on, um, say for a number of weeks, the first big principle in any kitty is just assessing them. I mean, just how serious is, is this or not? And, you know, I've discussed this in terms of how to assess is your cat sick or not. But a, a general rule of thumb would be, you know, if you've got a cat that is ill and vomiting, um, is your cat a parental wonder? Should I be using a home remedy or not? First of all, is your cat still fairly alert, active, eating and drinking? If that's the case, then, you know, that's a good candidate for using a home remedy. Um, if your cat, you know, is fairly lethargic, apparently dehydrated, then that's something more serious. It's going to likely need some, you know, urgent veterinary care. In terms of assessing that, in terms of assessing, you know, is it my cat a good candidate or not for home remedies? In terms of seeing just how serious is it or not? One of my basic principles is also assessing is your cat dehydrated or not? So in terms of doing that, the, the first big thing um, is one obviously are you seeing your cat, your cat you know eat substantial canned food or drinking fluid or not they're not doing that the next thing then is looking at two things one would be a thing called skin tint one thing is looking at the skin tint and what that means is there should be lots of fluid in terms of fluid itself it, it's keeping you know, it has a variety of different functions obviously in terms of water throughout the body but in terms of when a cat or an animal is dehydrated they'll actually lose the normal elasticity in their skin. So what that means, if I sort of grab Mingus's scruff of his neck here and I turn his skin, see how it bounces back to normal right away. If you were to do, do, do that in a cat that is substantially dehydrated, sort of 5% or more, you're gonna grab that bowl of skin, turn it, and it's gonna stay tented or it's gonna stay turned. And if you were to do that and see it take, you know, more than a few seconds for the skin to return to normal, you've got a fairly dehydrated cat that has likely got something more serious that you're gonna to need to do something about, meaning probably see your veterinarian to determine the underlying cause. The other thing you wanna do is assess is looking at the gum color and the moisture of the gums. So I'll show you on Mingus here, if you'll let me. Okay, Mingus, here's this cat in you. <laughs> what we're doing is I just lift his lips here you see his gums, and then you see his, first his gums are quite nice and pink. You can see them there, they're a nice pink color. They're also, if you touch them, they're fairly moist. So they actually feel moist to the, to the touch of my finger. So that's a real, another good indicator that I've got a normal, well hydrated cat. Those are two big things you can just basically test. So if you do that first, see that your cat seems to be fairly normally hydrated, then by all means, you know, I want you to go, then go down the path and considering some of these home remedies. So some of the more common causes of cats that are vomiting. Probably the most common one would be our cats that are getting hairballs. You know, they're constantly grooming themselves as our cats do, but especially in our long haired cats, or the cats that have an excessive amount of hair loss or shedding, I mean, they're gonna just have a bigger issue with hairballs. 
a next most common cause would be our cat that eats something. You can call it garbage cat eat something that's not agreeing with his or her stomach. So for instance, eating something on the ground, perhaps part of a plant, you name it. Maybe just a food that, that doesn't agree with them. Call it garbage gut or just acute, you know, you've had an upset stomach such as yourself causing the vomiting. Uh, the next more common reason be, would be to have some type of food intolerance or food allergy that up, subsequently resulting in vomiting. Uh, the most common allergies in cats appear to be fish and dairy, although you know, the list is extensive, but those are the two most common allergens. And a food allergy itself can just show up as vomiting, vomiting and diarrhea, or it can secondary then show up as skin lesions. So you can often have hair loss and scratching around the face. Um, the next sort of more common reason could be something a little bit more complex, such as IBD or inflammatory bowel disease. And once again, uh, that's a condition where your cat potentially is reacting to something he's ingesting, such as food, but he's actually having more like an autoimmune reaction. And the immune system has then reacted to, say, the protein or the antigen, say, for instance, dairy, and cause inflammatory cells within the intestinal tract themselves that's producing the vomiting or vomiting and or diarrhea. And then there's a whole host of metabolic diseases that can produce vomiting. You know, it could be something, you know, for instance, such as liver disease, such as kidney disease. Um, the secondary making your cat nauseous and then vomit. In, a, in those cases, we're going to have a cat that's, that is fairly sick. So if you've got a cat with hairballs, I mean, how would you suspect that? Likely you're just seeing, you're finding hairballs on the ground. Um, you should look up there if you just got an image of hairballs and what you'd expect to find. Um, obviously the biggest thing to help your cat with hairballs is one, making sure they're on an appropriate diet. So what that means would be primarily a canned food as opposed to a dry kibble. But if your cat is on an appropriate diet, you know, such as the canned food with additional essential fatty acids, typically they're going to have a, pretty much a healthier hair coat, they're going to be shedding less hair, which means less hair balls. The next thing would be to just, you know, look at, you know, grooming your cat more often. So getting one of the de shedders, you know, removing some of the hair, they don't have to ingest all that hair. And then the last thing, a real simple home remedy, you've got these vomiting cats, you go see your veterinarian, we might sell you a thing called Phylaxin. But really what that is, is this. It's Vaseline. Um, it's a really easy, simple thing to give. And in some cases, it just means giving it for two or three days just to expel that hairball. So often it just means doing just a small amount, you know, like I've got this, uh, about a quarter of an inch, you know, the tip of your finger, plop that down your cat's mouth, goes down pretty easily. You know, twice a day, somewhere between three to five days, and often that's all you're gonna need to treat that hairball. Another real simple remedy that I've used many times, believe it or not, there's a couple of different teas that work really well and are safe to give to cats. I'm not gonna give it to Mingus, I'm just having him hang out here. I've been bribing him with catnip. Seems to work pretty well. There's some catnip tea. Okay? Mm. He's pretty good natured considering I'm all weirding him out in his house. So there's two different teas that I've used. I've used peppermint tea, I use chamomile tea. So Shelly was really nice to brew up some of this tea. This is the chamomile. And what you'd want to use is use, you could you could just use uh, a chamomile tea bag. Um, here's another tea bag here which I had. And you want to put that in a cup of tea. You know, let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. So it's you know reasonably strong. And you let that cool first. You can keep that in the fridge. Warming up to room temperature. I'm not. I mean, it's a little kitty. I'm not going to give it to you. I'm just going to show people. I'll let them take off. Here you go, kitty. And in terms of dosing, typically what I'm giving is about a teaspoon, you know, two to three times a day. So a teaspoon is about five mils, which I'm drawing up. So it's easier if you're going to have a syringe to do it. And this is my chamomile tea, and I'll just show you here. There it is there. So that would be like a teaspoon of chamomile, a teaspoon of peppermint tea, uh, three times daily. And that's for sort of symptomatic relief. We've got a cat that's, you know, suddenly vomiting. He's probably eating something such as, that's not agreeing with, with him, i.e. garbage gut. Real easy, safe, symptomatic way to treat your cat at home. A third thing I want to discuss is the use of a homeopathic. Uh, this is one here, it's called Arsenicum, or Arsenicum Album. It's the first, one of the first homeopathics I, I ever used in veterinary practice. 
And you know, primarily that came in part from clients coming in saying this is what they were giving their dogs or this is what they're giving their cats for vomiting or especially for garbage, got vomiting, diarrhea, they've eaten something, you're not sure what it is, throwing up, they might be vomiting and or diarrhea. And it may be difficult for you to get your head around in terms of how it works. It definitely was for me, especially initially in veterinary practice. Um, but the fact is it really helped many, many pet owners. So it's one that I'd encourage you to consider trying. In terms of doses, typically I'm using the Arsenicum 30C. And for a cat, I would just be giving one of these little capsules. I'll show you them here. And you can just put it under your cat's, cat's lips. You don't actually need to have them swallow it. So here as they are, here's one here. I think you can, yeah, you should be able to see it there. So that's Arsenicum 30C, you could just one of those capsules. For in a sudden episode of vomit, you get it as frequently as every one to two hours uh, throughout the day. You're not going to harm or hurt your cat by doing it. The next thing I want to discuss is specifically for our cats that have inflammatory bowel disease. So that would be a condition, more chronic, ongoing, be chronic vomiting, might be your cat vomiting once or twice a week, may also be accompanied with diarrhea. For many of you, you've likely seen your veterinarian more than a few times. You may or may not have had a diagnosis. In this condition, often, unfortunately, you know, some of your choices in terms of treatment involve you know, a, a sulfa type antibiotic to help suppress some of the immune response. Um, the mainstay of treatment has been a corticosteroid, you know, such as prednisone, some cases even more stronger immunosuppressive drugs. So what we're doing in that situation is trying to suppress the overactive immune system. If your cat has IBD, one herb in particular uh, that has been shown to be beneficial for people with IBD is curcumin, um, which I've discussed a variety of different times in the past for many different things. And if you're looking at giving curcumin, you need to be you know, breaking open the capsule, mixing the powder into the canned food. Um, or if you can, just get curcumin as a capsule. And we're looking at doses of 100 milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight, uh, given twice daily for IBD. The last home remedy I want to discuss is a conventional medication actually called famotidine, but it's an over-the-counter medication. Here it is here. It's for sold under acid control. I mean, this is one I actually just grabbed it out of my medicine cabinet. It's called, it, it often is sold under the brand name Pepsid, and this is a 10 milligram tablet. So it's one where I even used to prescribe it in veterinary practice works really well for our nauseous, ongoing vomiting cats. Uh, in particular, I used to use it for the cats that had chronic kidney failure or kidney disease. So the typical famotidine cat dose is 2.5 to 5 milligrams. Uh, so they come in these little, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll open one up so you can see it, this 10 milligram tablet. So here it is here. Maybe, maybe or not you can see it. So typically we're going to be giving a quarter of a tablet two to three times a day and we're going to do it somewhere short term, somewhere between two to three days. And for most cases that's going to deal with uh, the stomach inflammation and then stop the vomiting. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Thank you Mingus for starring in it. I've since just enticed him with some catnip back there. So if you do have a vomiting cat, I mean the first big principle, as I said earlier, is you need to assess your cat. If he's really serious, you need to be seeing your veterinarian. If we're looking at something mild, your cat is still eating, still drinking, we're only look at symptomatic treatment, then by all means consider some of those home remedies.